So this is the challenge of Battletech. So many amazing mechs to play, so little time, so few games. And in this podcast, this vlog, I was asked to review and put forth some ideas regarding the Firestarter. Because certainly a very, very unique and very, very interesting mech. Now, in rolling in the Firestarter, what I try to do in every Battletech game, there's certain core mechs that I really enjoy playing that, given the opportunity, I'm going to take, I'm going to pull in. Uh, Battlemaster, Marauder, Warhammer, awesome. For whatever reason, mainly through gaming narrative and the history of playing Battletech, these are my core mechs. These are the core mechs that I enjoy playing. Building on that, I try to pull in mechs that I don't play as often. T-Bolt is also up there. Absolutely fantastic mech. But I try to pull in one or two machines, mechs and tanks, that are a little bit different. Something to experiment with. And if that experiment doesn't work out that well, in theory, it shouldn't really cost me the game. So the Firestarter, along with the Vulcan, along with the Urban Mech, I put those in a class of mechs that are interesting to explore. Now, building on this, especially if you're new to Battletech, and I've been pushing up some core tactics to the Game of Armored Combat starter set, what you find out really fast is that not all mechs are equal. Some mechs are very, very, very specialized with the roles that are assigned to them. And again, the Vulcan, the Firestarter, absolutely. So how do we begin to tactically approach the Firestarter on the tabletop earn its battle value, take advantage of some of its unique features, and know just how far we can possibly push it. So naturally, before we get into utilizing the flamers and stuff, what you discover with the fire starter is here's a mech. You can get into a lot of trouble with this mech. And I'm not talking about being daring and trying to light everything on flames. I'm talking about if you look at the damage output of the lasers combined with the speed it, it has the punch, it has the bite of a medium mech. And, and certainly as a light mech, it, it puts out a lot more damage than other light mechs in its class. So you get fooled really fast, tactically, into thinking this is going to pull duty like a, a, a medium mech. And then you realize it has the armor of a light mech. So it's very, very easy. And I, I speak from experience. Very, very easy to get into trouble or look at the weapons profile and say, okay, I'm going to push it a little bit more and maybe engage a little bit further, a little bit harder, a little bit faster. So just pushing it out there, um, certainly the rules of how light mechs work, we're going to try and stay in that box with the fire starter. So one of the things naturally is this idea Okay, run around and set fire to woods, scorched earth, burn out bushes. I'm trying to think. I rarely, rarely do that uh, for two reasons. And certainly the new map packs from Catalyst so far might change this tactica. Although I have the Woodlands map pack, it, it really hasn't. What you find with the map packs, the, he the hex maps is heavy forest is few and far between. And it's part of the tactical nature of how the maps are designed. They're designed to be about equal in every area of approach. And they're designed with ideas of pocket, even the new ones, pocket areas of terrain and elevation. It's encouraging you to run and gun. It's encouraging a very, very fluid battlefield. And, and this is great because it's going to make the game very dynamic. It would be pretty boring if there were just two hills, one across from each other, and you just kind of line up and shoot and slug it out. There's a lot of deploy, counter-deploy, pushing, pulling. It works. So what that means is, what am I really setting on fire with the fire starter? And I'm going to turn this over in the comments because I would love to hear your feedback on this mech. So we move to a more traditional wargaming table. And I define that as um, much larger, a lot more terrain, a lot more opportunities. The challenge with the fire starter on a traditional wargaming table is uh, certainly there's more woods or more terrain to set on fire. But the nature of being a bigger table means I can avoid those areas. Or if I get caught in the woods and you set it on fire, certainly I can back out and go around. There's a lot more maneuverability. But all is not lost. City fight, urban warfare, city tech. That is a very, very interesting, 
important and unique aspect of battle tech. It's one thing to fight out in the open. It's one thing to fight in woods and hills. It's one thing to fight in the desert. All that changes vastly in terms of tactics and tools once you're in a city. I find, ironically, uh, the Vulcan is kind of pushed forward as the ultimate anti-mech, anti-city suppression type machine. The Firestarter is beast in a city simply because there's a lot to burn and set on fire. The confines of even a small-sized city means maneuverability is key. You need jump jets. If you don't have jump jets, you don't really even have speed because there's a lot of um, – your speed is cut down in the city because to navigate through, you're going to have to make multiple turns, multiple changing multiple directions. That's going to really cut down your speed potential with how you run. So right away what we see is more opportunities to engage those flamers in kind of a scorched earth, uh, area denial, things like that, against combined arms, against infantry. This this is where we're entering into war crimes um, areas, simply because you can vaporize legions of infantry. You can vaporize – I always say roll the dice – in every war game, um, in Battletech, if you're infantry and you get hit by machine guns or you get caught out in the open, even where damage is doubled, I'm going to take some damage. And even if I only have, you know, five, six, eight, ten infantry left, I, I want you to roll the dice simply because, look, there's going to be some overkill. Maybe the dice gods are with me. Maybe I actually survive. We should always roll it out. Don't just say, OK, I'm hit and I'm done and, and take your stuff off the table. Make your opponent roll it out. That said, when you get hit with multiple flamers on a stand of infantry, it's just you can roll it out all you want, even under the minimums. It's going to just just devastate everything in there. So the irony being against infantry that excel in a city-type urban environment where they can tie down heavy mechs. They can put the hurt on other mechs on there. Infantry, their battle value is worth four or five Am I going to be even as bold? Yes, to say six times the amount in a city. Absolutely, especially against vehicles. They, they attack ambush from a building, hit motive hits. They're just devastating in there. You bring in a fire starter, and it's just absolutely insane with that. So tactically, scorched earth in certain areas, certain setups, yes, absolutely. Being a little bit more aggressive when you need a little bit of bite and maybe behaving like a media mech, yes, just be aware of it and have a way out. Or the target you're engaging, you're a light mech, but you're acting like a media mech, the target that you engage, make sure it's damaged, make sure it's preoccupied, make sure you get a little bit of support. But certainly a very unique, a very, very interesting mech, a mech that has a lot of character, and in your stable of mechs, I would add this to your collection. It's not something that you're going to play every single game, unless it's absolutely your favorite. But it is something that's going to hit up enough rotation and that you're going to really enjoy playing and putting down on the table.